Jennifer uh, and Shauna, it looks like we have a question from the audience. Can you give a specific example where a TMA proceeding is more advantageous than a TTAB proceeding? There's so many different examples, so many different uh, factors at play, but the one for me, at least that pop out is that say you are the junior user. So say you want to use a mark, but you're second in line. There is someone else ahead of you who's registered. You do your investigation, you find it doesn't look like they're using the mark or perhaps they mocked up their specimen. They don't look like their state of use looks all that um, great, like accurate. So in that case, I think um, a TMA proceeding is effective because then you can attack their rights without really uh, being then the subject to a counterclaim that you would in a uh, TTAP proceeding. And I'll go into it further, but y you can actually file um, a petition for reexamination or expungement uh, anonymously. So you can file it in the name of uh, your attorney, if they will allow you to do that, uh, or an investigator or a third unrelated third party. So you don't necessarily have to have, uh, it could be anybody who, who files the petition. So if you wanna stay anonymous, that's a great way to then um, kick the senior registrant out have your application move forward, and then the registrant has to rely on their common law rights. And if the registrant's common law rights are sort of spotty, then you're in a great place. And it's then um, you're in a better uh, situation for negotiating either a coexistence or consent of that sort. So that, that's, a, I think, the primary example of where um, a TMA proceeding becomes uh, much more advantageous than a um, TTAP. That anonymity and being able to tackle a senior registrant's rights.